You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Now, more than ever, online businesses are experiencing an environment where we're constantly bombarded by low price competition and tend to undercharge just to win the business. So if that sounds a little bit like you or something that you're currently struggling with, you're going to want to stick around for today's short tips episode. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne. And in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Pricing. This has got to be the number one um, struggle area, I think, for pretty much any service-based business. And we've been covering it um, quite a lot at the moment in my Business Jam um, VIP student group and also in my um, group coaching um, crew as well. So lots of people at the moment who are looking, you know, when you're doing your business development, obviously pricing your services or packages is a key component. And certainly every time we do any major update or transformation in our business, we're going to be looking at pricing. And this is something that gets people really, really stuck. So I wanted to talk to you today about just a few things that will help to shift your perspective on how you do your pricing and hopefully help you feel a lot more confident um, about your prices and what and how you've put them out, what why you're doing it. So firstly, people do not buy because of your price. This is probably the number one um, lesson that I have told people over and over again throughout my career, um, even in corporate, the sales teams, you know, people would say they haven't bought because of the price. Like, no, no, they haven't bought because they don't see the value that you're providing for the price that you are offering. So it's really all about what it actually is that you're delivering and whether they think it's what they need and that they actually need it enough that that sounds like an excellent investment for them to make. Now you might be thinking, yeah, okay, but it still comes down to the budget that they've got, et cetera, et cetera. But I would have to say that over and over again, what I have experienced is that even if people think initially they don't have the budget, if they are presented with an opportunity or an offer to make an investment that's going to get them to a goal or a milestone that they really want to get to, they will find a way to make it work. They will find the money. It's amazing what people can do and can afford. It may be different from what they originally thought, but this is just about your sales strategy and the process of decision-making that you help them to go through and take them down. You will always be too expensive for somebody and that is okay. Like there are people who literally will have something that's free and still feel that it's too expensive. You could offer something for $1 and people may request a refund. So we need to get out of our heads that we need to be this, you know, affordable price or this bargain basement price because you will always be too expensive for somebody. They are not your ideal clients. Okay. If they think that you're too expensive, then that's fine. They can go and find somebody else. You do not have to be the affordable, perfect price option for everybody. So that is, it's huge. Once you kind of take that on and feel in control of your pricing and the fact that it's okay if someone doesn't want to buy because of the price, you will have so much more power in what you're doing and how you're marketing. So feel that that's okay. Here's an example for you. Um, you know, with a gym, so with fitness, I'm sure all of us have done this in the past where we're like, we need to go to the gym, we need to get fit. There's so many different options out there. And one of the gyms here in Australia, F45, um, they are going absolutely gangbusters. Their business is booming. And guess what? They are one of the most expensive types. So is CrossFit. 
So why are people paying for F45 or for CrossFit when they could pay a cheap price and go to Jets? or go to one of the other, you know, 24 seven gyms. It's because of the value that they think they're going to get. It's because of not just the gym and what is available, but it's because of the transformation and the outcome they think they're going to get by doing F45 or by doing CrossFit. So that is how those people are able to price their services at a much higher level than some of the other ones is because of the value. So that's number one. That's really the first shift that I want you to take is that it's not about your price. You do not need to be the bottom price. You can certainly, and you should, price yourself at your value. So the second one is that pricing is actually part of your marketing strategy. It's um, it's how you position yourself in the market. So if you are positioning yourself as an expert or a thought leader or something where you're a premium service or product, you can't go offering a cheap market price that's one of the lowest ones because people just won't trust that you are an expert. They won't trust that you are premium. So you've got to really think about what it is that you're marketing yourself as and what you want to be, what that position is in the market, and then set your pricing to be appropriate for that positioning. They need to align or people won't trust. And as soon as they don't trust, they won't buy. So that one is a really simple one. Hopefully that makes it much easier for you. The third issue that I think a lot of people feel that they have is um, just being stuck, stuck with maybe old rates. So you might have products or services that you've had for a while now and you feel like you can't increase the price because it's going to annoy all your existing customers. Now, if they really are way below what you should be charging, um, are you feeling, you know, resentment when you are doing these services and thinking, well, I'm doing this, but I'm not actually getting paid for it. I, you know, I'm getting paid what I, I what I was when I started, but that's not really what I'm worth anymore. So you actually, you're in control of this. You know, you have the power to change. You've got the power to change your pricing. And hey, it's okay if somebody decides to leave if they decide not to stay. Um, If you're going to change your price across the board, you know, you would expect that some clients may decide it's not in their, in their um, budget anymore. Um, However, I would think if you've done a really good job and the value is there that you should see majority take on your new pricing without any question. It's literally just having that confidence to back yourself and to do it. So I would say, Do it. If you know that you're underpricing and that's not what you're worth, absolutely do that process to change it. And you might be really surprised about how many people stay with you. But also don't be sad if if a few people leave. It's okay because you're going to attract new people at your new rates. um, And that's how you're positioning. The other one is you can, if you, if certainly if you've got services that have an end date, they're not just ongoing forever and ever and ever. Just update your pricing for new customers and keep your existing ones on whatever they're on until their package is has run out. That's an option for you um, and a super easy one because all you're doing then is changing your front-end marketing pricing um, and what you're promoting so that the new people coming in are going onto your new new rates and your existing customers, you know, they get the benefit of having joined you and continuing to be on your old rates. Um, that's not something I think is a great strategy if you've got open-ended contracts that just will keep on going forever. Um, I would certainly be looking at the other option where you give them a price increase. Um, and that's it's really just something that you manage through through good communication, which you should have with your clients anyway. So this is the three major areas, I think, you know, and this is where I see most people struggling. Um, so I hope that's been helpful for you if you've been feeling really stuck on pricing. Um, a lot of it's really in your own mindset and how you're thinking about your pricing, um, feeling afraid to raise your prices or afraid to, you know, maybe put a price out there that isn't the cheapest. Um, but think about what it is that you're trying to achieve, who you're trying to attract and what they would consider to be a fair price. Um, And also make sure that you're communicating your value because that is what people are buying. It's the outcome. It's not the actual thing so much that you're offering. So what is the benefit they're getting and what would the alternative cost be? I guarantee you that the alternative to them could be way, way, way more. 
So I hope that's been useful. Um, it's been fun chatting with you again today and I will talk to you soon. Bye. So if you would like to improve the marketing of your business, then the first place we always start is with your ideal customer avatar. Now, my system for your ideal client is different to most. With my ultimate customer avatar worksheet, there are 35 questions to help you really deep dive into what your ideal client is currently thinking, feeling, and you know what their goals are, what they're doing in their buying behavior. Go to jessicaosborne.com slash customer hyphen avatar to download your free copy of my ultimate customer avatar worksheet today. And let's get started on defining who that ideal client really is.